Thank you for staying tuned. And this is still Cosmopolitan Market on the Nigeria Custom Broadcasting Network. And I did say at the beginning of the program that today we shall be discussing quite a number of issues from the IMF's approval of the allocation of $3.35 billion to Nigeria as part of the special drawing right, as well as uh, the ECOWAS plan for a cross-border debt market by 2023. And of course, there is a lot with regards to the role of the ECO, which is going to be the regional currency in driving uh, regional integration. But joining me now to discuss all of these issues is Professor Ken Ife. He is a development economist. Thank you, Prof, for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Thank you once again for joining in. And uh, let's start with the IMF, uh, what's it called, the IMF Special uh, Drawing Right, which of course we saw uh, last week that IMF had allocated $3.35 billion. And for the benefit of those watching Prof who may not know what this means, I mean, when you hear special drawing right, it could mean a number of things. But I'd like to hear from you, a professional here. What does it mean to have a special drawing rights allocation from the IMF? Okay. The special drawing right is not a currency. It's just a tool, um, a financial asset, which is created by IMF. And, um, and all along, the origin of it was when it was first created, it was denominated, you know, the, the, it was equivalent. One SDR was equivalent to 0 0.88889 uh, gram of, mm. of gold, mm. which at that point was equal to $1. But by 1973, when they, we saw the collapse of the of the Bretton Wood uh, system. Now, we will now go to basket of currencies. And there are five currencies in that basket. And it's the dollar, is the pounds, is the euro, is the Japanese yen, and the Chiros uh, China renminbi. So those are the five. So it's weighted across those. And uh, so what it is, is that is a, is is like an, an additional tool to the foreign reserves of countries. And, uh, and that gives just like 10% more. That means that when you want to stabilize the global economic system, financial system, um, you could draw on those to enable those countries that are desperately in need to be able to borrow to get out of the crisis. So this COVID gives you an idea of why we need that. But there was one, the last one that was drawn was in 2009 uh, when we had the financial crisis. So, and that was drawn to enable countries to stabilize. But this time round, the $650 billion is the value of what they are going to draw, the SDR for, for this August. But of course, African countries expect just over 30 a billion dollars of that, and um, as I said, is a pro is a, is, is is related to the uh, what you have the the the, the rights you are exercising is proportional to the economic weight of the member states in the IMF uh, measured by their their reserves. So, in the case of the thirty just over thirty billion coming to Africa, you would immediately know. That the big boys, the five big boys who take the lion's share, which is Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, Morocco, and Algeria, they will be the big boys to take. So Nigeria is expecting just almost ten percent of that, which is three three point something billion dollars. So that's that's how it plays out. But what it means in practical terms is that the need, the additional money that they need to enable them buy vaccines, which is crippling, you know, financial. So they're, they're going to be able to use some of that money to buy vaccines. And of course, for Kenya Nigeria, we're also going to borrow another 6.2 billion from Euro, for Euro bonds. So that we, we, we'll have over 10 billion now that is sitting there. But for other countries, what IMF has tried to, some, some countries don't need that, their own money. Yeah. Some don't need their SDR. The richer countries don't need their SDR. So there are three schemes. Russia, um, uh, IMF has one scheme, uh, where they, a fund 
where they collect the money. There's one sustainability fund where they collect some of the money that they don't need and then lend to the people who need them at concessionary rate, maybe zero rate. There's another one that they also have. And then UNECA is, is proposing a 30 billion new one for African countries so that those who don't need their money could put it there, their SDR, and then other countries can borrow at concessionary rates from there. So that, these are the way that they are being structured. Yeah, but there's a, a final one, though. You can go to a country on a bilateral basis. Say, for example, if Nigeria needs more money for vaccine from China, we can say to China, we want $5 billion of your SDR to enable us to buy vaccine. And it is their own vaccine. And it's their own lending. You know, so, so they may play ball with us to say, well, okay, we don't need it, but we can have it. And then at zero interest rate of 0 0.1. So that's, that's at bilateral level. Mm. Just to be clear, Prof, are SDRs uh, loans or grants? No, that, that loan, no, I don't see anything as grant. Grant, where is grant going to? You know, the money that's, the, what it is about is for you to be able to borrow at concessionary rates. And some of these rates are usually around 0%. Mm -hmm. But 0 0.1, 0 0.2, I, don't, I didn't hear that it is free money. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the free monies have been given already. Out. They've already yeah. given the free ones, which is the 20% of our population who are going to get vaccinated free. That one has happened, though. But this one is additional because they really want to borrow money. But some can't find where to borrow the money for the remaining 85% of your population. Mm -hmm. We haven't even done, how many percent have we done? We haven't done only 2 million. We haven't even started. Mm. Okay, Prof, how much effect would these monies have on our external reserves, bearing in mind that we have seen uh, depleting external reserves in recent times? And of course, uh, FX liquidity as well. How much effect would this money have on these areas? No, we're not touching our reserves. This is an additional. It's equivalent to 10% of our reserve coming in within our orbit. That's why you're looking at three, three point something. Our reserve is about three point something yeah. billion. So it is just an additional to augment the foreign, foreign reserve. But what it does, of course, is that it eases the liquidity. And that's what it does to make the global system a, a bit more liquid. So this is an injection into the global financial system to make it a bit more liquid. Yeah. In other words, it's enhancing the capacity of member states to borrow more. Uh, you know, so that's all. That is all that is doing. Okay. There is money you're going to pay back. Okay. Still talking about debt. Sometime last week, we also heard of the ECOWAS plan uh, for cross-border debt market. Uh, can you kindly give us an insight into what this entails and what the long-term goal for this is about, or what we should expect in the long term? Well, the, the debt situation in, in West Africa is is, a, is very tricky. It's very tricky because if you look at the 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 landscape, most of the West African countries are between 40% debt to GDP ratio to 100% debt to GDP. Cape Verde is just over. She's the only one that is just over. Nigeria is just at the bottom, with less than about 21%. Although when we add this 6.2 billion, it might go up to 25% or so. So, so we are we are we are not. It's not as bad for us mm. as it is for many yeah. of these countries. So they are looking for, just as this SDR has come up, they are also looking for ways in which they can borrow more um, mm. to help them uh, you know, stave off the, the crisis that they are facing. And the crisis is not just COVID. There's also balance of payment crisis. There's also import bills. There are lots of development, uh, infrastructure development. There are a lot of uh, re re requirement for them to borrow. Uh, human resource development, all of that. So every little helps. And they are looking at this mechanism for increasing their access to borrowed, uh, borrowed money. Mm. And what will this mean for, like you have mentioned, some countries that have even bigger issues beyond uh, debts? What mm. would this mean for countries where uh, their stock markets aren't even as big as, say, Nigeria, South Africa, Ghana, and countries with bigger stock ma market? What would this mean for these smaller nations? Well, it just means that they, that they are going to face more uh, fiscal stress. That's, that's what it means to them. But also, it means, in effect, that it's going to be a longer time before we, we will close in on monetary uh, uh, macroeconomic 
convergence criteria. In other words, our monetary currency, this single currency we have been talking about, mm. is, is pushed back because the convergence, those 10 convergence, uh, macroeconomic convergence criteria are widened now than ever because of the debt. The debt has increased and widened the scope of achieving many of those um, uh, uh, criteria. Mm. And you know the 10 of them, you know, the inflation has mm. to be single digit, our own is 17 point something. Mm. Uh, the debt to GDP to debt, uh, debt to GDP ratio, as you saw, is widening for many of the members. That you, uh, then even deficit to GDP ratio should be less than 4%. Many of them are well over 4%, well, well, well over. Nigeria is just from three, around three. Then all the parameters, there are 10 of them. Uh, even the, the central banks are not supposed to lend more than 10% of their of, 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 of you know, to fiscal lend, their lending. Should be more than 10% of the v revenue of the government of the previous year. We are not talking about that. It's, it's, it's a lot, lot more. It's you know, double, triple digit for those. Then you have the issue like um, the uh, money that you owe. You know, you have to liquidate those debts. And then, you know, people are owing more. States that governments are borrowing even more from private sector. They're not paying. They're borrowing even more. They're supposed to liquidate those. You have to have a real interest rate. Our own is negative interest rate because our interest rates, the, you can see that inflation is 17 point. And when inflation is far higher than your interest rate, you're on a negative interest rate. So there are many, many other criteria. Okay, revenue. Uh, the, the employment should be less than 35% of government revenue. Look at how many people are we employing? How's the revenue in the budget compared to? The, the cost of personal cost is, is over 50%. Of, of the actual government revenue. The, then you also have that the government must invest not less than 20% of their revenue because investment creates jobs. So we're okay on that side, but many countries can say that. Mm. Uh, Prof, that, you, 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 did me, you made mention of the single currency, that is the ECHO, which was mm. expected to have launched this year. However, the launch has been tentatively uh, postponed to, I believe, 2027. And we have... How, barely say six years towards the the launch of the currency but i know you have mentioned some macroeconomic indices as to why we may not be ready for that uh, single currency but aside from that beyond that would you say we might be ready to have one currency in the block in, by 2027 yes probably. Hmm. now wow <laughs> only only togo has had today met those conditions and then you have to meet them and stay on them for three years. It's only Togo that has met them. Nigeria has met some, but many countries, there is the increasing divergence of, of those 10 criteria. It makes me wonder, you know, how, how feasible it will be by 2027. But there are also other underlying issues about how the the current situation, you know, a year ago or two, you know, France and Cote d'Ivoire, mm. you know, did a, a, a quick one on, 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 mm. on the rest of them, which I didn't find anything wrong with that. They, they just took a, a strategic step and said, look, we are now converting the name from that to Euro, and, you know, whatever it means. But it means a lot when you, when you break it down. Um, because they are just going to begin to run their macroeconomic policy, which they were not running before. The minimum monetary policy was never in their hand before. But now it's going to be in their hand. And then we'll begin to, we're going to see how that plays out on, on, on a number of areas. You know, for example, Syria has been monitoring our monetary policy and has been no issue about it. You know what Nanara is today and you know what it's going to be tomorrow morning. So but you can't say that of what of the other currency, the Francophone countries. So we'll have to see how that goes. And remember that if the first step is for the Anglophones to to integrate their currency and then then this next stage is for the currency of our own currency to now merge with the Euro. Sorry, with the CEFA, the Franc CEFA. And uh, we just have to see how that goes. Mm. You know.
I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, bet that it can happen in seven, in seven years. Okay, Prof, um, I'm going to put you on the, on the hot seat now. When do you think it's going to be operational, since you have said that based on the indices which you have mentioned, seven years seems too close. When do you foresee this happening then? If I was speaking to you in December 19, in January 19, uh, 2020, if I was saying to you in January 2020, oh, by the end of this year or the next year it will happen, COVID just came mm. and COVID just sent everybody away. Mm. Widened the gap. We are, all we are looking for money. Every country in ECOWAS is looking for money right now mm. because they need to be to, to survive. They need the money for COVID-19. I mean, what percentage? We've only got, four, is it 4 million doses we got in Nigeria? We are 208 million people. Mm. You need 400 and 30 something million doses because you have to have two per person. We've only got 4 million. We need 400. <laughs> it's going to tell you how long it's going to go. And you need the money to pay for these uh, doses after receiving your free 20%. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the, the, the other COVID variants are coming in. America, that has almost over, overcome this, is now seeing a different dimension. That 99% of the people who are currently contracting this disease are people who have not been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. I mean, that tells you that there's far more danger with the new variants coming in. So you can't, there's no crystal ball that will tell you what's, what other crisis is there. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you don't know, environmental crisis are also stepping up. So we don't know. And all of them impact on the economy and especially those macroeconomic convergence criteria. So we also have to see what AFCTA means. To, to our own domestic arrangement. When I say domestic, I mean West Africa. We have to see what the wider AFCTA means because we are now heading, using Afro-Exim Bank to work on a cross-border settlement system. Because the whole currency thing is about settlement. It's not about saving, uh, keeping our reserves in that currency. As well. That's not the idea. It's how you settle trade between traders. Now, while we are working on the mechanics of settling the trade using currency and this and that, people are now using blockchain technology, cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. They come to the bank, I want to pay for my goods in China. They're giving them all these long stories. They're telling them, you can't use your dollar here, you can't do that, you can't put your dollar into this, you have to wait for this. They will just shut down and go to their, com to their laptop and use their, their phone and use their cryptocurrency to settle the the supplier in China in minutes and the goods are off coming. So I don't know how that's going to affect all this whole thing we are talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? And countries are bringing in their own digital currencies. Nigeria says 1st of October. So you don't know. They may render all these irrelevant mm. in, the, in, the, in the medium term. We don't know. Mm. Okay, Prof, you have made mention of settlement, but Nigeria now being the, the largest market in Africa, uh, of course, there has been discussions around the AFCFTA for a long time now. But are we seeing enough being done in regards to our terms of trade, especially in Nigeria? I'm much clear uh, what you mean by terms of trade. There's terms of international trade. Terms of international it, trade in line it, with the AFCFTA. Yeah, well, first of all, what are the rules of origin? The rules of origin from the AFCTA perspective is very clear. Many countries in East Africa and Southern Africa are completely in line. We have our own terms of origin, uh, uh, terms, rules of origin in, in West Africa, ECOWAS, and we are, we are working to align, align, align that. So that's number one. Then you talk about the, the, the payment system, which I've just mentioned. Now, we are working on it in ECOWAS, but it has now, the AFCT, go, uh, Africa Union remitted it to. Um, the Afrexim Bank to sort out, and they're working on it. I think it's probably now going about being launched. So we'll have to see how that f helps them facilitating the payment. But there's also the movement of the goods. That's where the trouble lies. Have we invested in uh, maritime for shipping? We don't even have a national shipping line. We have cabotage issues, but we're not even in a position to talk about those because we don't even have our own shipping lines. So how are we going to make sure? We have a COAS um, Sea Link project, which was to put four ship across the coast from Senegal, Dakar, all the way to Cameroon. But that has to stop. 100, only $100 million. We couldn't find that money 
for, for us to launch this. One man would have given you all that money. Is there another thing? Over six, seven years now. Then airline, what are we doing about? We don't even have our national airline. And then you have the whole continental airspace. These are the ways you can move the goods in and out of the country. You can move it through the road. We are having blockages. You've seen what's going on in, in Cote d'Ivoire, not Cote d'Ivoire. Um, uh, shipments coming from, transshipments coming from, from Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Ghana, Togo, are blocked at, at Benin border. They have to pay so much more. And so so it's, you can build your net, your tent on, in the air. When all those modes of transport are... We haven't got much control. So I don't know how we're actually going to do the trading. Mm. But of course, services are fine. We are all in electronic services. You know, we are doing well. With ICT, mm. DSTV is collecting all our money, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So. <laughs> okay, prof. Still talking about um, trade facilitation now across West Africa. Recently, we did hear from the ECOWAS, uh, uh, the ECOWAS head who made mention of the Vision 2050, I believe. He, he did men, make mention of the Vision 2050, which he said will be validated and endorsed sometime this year, I believe in December. And he, he, he talked about uh, integration, trade integration and trade facilitation across Africa. And uh, this brings to mind the Vision 2020 that we had seen some years ago. I'd like you to take us through that. How far so far have we come with the Vision 2020, considering the fact that we are currently in 2021? And what are the prospects of us achieving the Vision 2050, which has been put on the table? I'm not sure which 2050 are you referring to. Is it ECOWAS own ECOWAS, or Nigerian own? We have our own. No, no the ECOWAS Vision okay, 2050. Right. ECOWAS Vision 2050. Has it arrived yet? I haven't seen that arrive yet. Okay. It, it's come. Nigerian 2050 is also arriving because I'm, I'm involved in that. I'm the chairman of the the committee, the technical working group on digital economy, bioeconomy, science, technology, and innovation. Mm -hmm. So we have worked and we have developed the 2021 to 2025 medium term national development plan. Mm -hmm. So that is on. We are now going to come back later to work on the 2050, mm -hmm. agenda 2050. We are not talking about 20, 2020, that one is gone. We have, you know, we actually tried, though, in, in, all f in fairness. Because in, in around, towards the end of 2014, our GDP just rose to $573 billion, just close to that $600 billion target to make us number 20. We were number 21. But suddenly we now had the, the crisis. Mm. And that crisis rocked our boat. We, we lost 60% of our revenue from oil and gas and stuff like that. And then we went down to number 26. Mm. And we haven't recovered since I think we're about 450 uh, billion in GDP, so it's still it's still a long shot now. But to say that it's just a date that you should forget mm. as far as possible, because we have um, we also had at the end from 2017 February we had the economic recovery and growth plan which ran to 2020, mm. that tried to bring reality into what we should expect. And there was a lot of um, macroeconomic handshakes in the, in the EIGP. Mm. So both of them quenched in 2020. So we don't want to talk about them anymore. Mm. Um, we're not talking about the 2021 to 2025 plan, which we now have on the table. And the subsequent one, which will be 2050, Agenda 2050. Okay, Prof. Uh, most of these plans that we have seen in recent times, including the ECOWAS 2050, which I saw a summary of, focuses mm -hmm. mostly on uh, innovation, sustainable development, and inclusivity, inclusivity uh, within Africa. Are we... Would you say we are on the right path towards the attainment of all of these things, especially looking at innovation and the launch of the digital currency by October 1 right here in Nigeria? No, it, we... We are on course on our own development agenda. Mm. But the ECOWAS development agenda uh, is still open to scrutiny. Because don't forget, we also have our own 2020 for ECOWAS agenda, and then we are now moving forward. And, uh, and it's all, all of them are supposed to, ours is supposed to dovetail to the ECOWAS, and the ECOWAS is supposed to dovetail to Africa Union Agenda 2063. So, you know. So that's why we are doing our own agenda 2050 to match ECOWAS. And then obviously we're all looking to 2063. But we're all working broadly along the same scene. For example, for Africa is a big one from Africa down to ECOWAS, down to Nigeria. The, the 
the human resource development is a big agenda, which includes health and, and, and education. Infrastructure is, is key, and that's the same. You have infrastructure. Nigeria has, um, apart from the U, U, AU, AU infrastructure plan, master plan, you have Africa Development Bank master plan, you have the Nigerian 2043 uh, uh, infrastructure master plan, and then we also have... So, they're all aligning themselves. And within that, you have a regional dimension because we are talking about how we fulfill the missing links in the regional infrastructure configuration. For example, whilst it is noted that Africa needs about $63, $93 billion a year to invest in our infrastructure, um, World Bank re uh, report, uh, I think it's 2010, showed that if only we can invest $250 billion on fulfilling missing, like closing the missing links in the road, in the railway, in the uh, uh, power, just linking them, that you could generate extra $250 billion in, in trade. So invest $20 billion specifically on closing the links mm. will generate $250 billion extra in regional trade. Shows you what, what an energy you are going to unleash if we do that. Well, Prof, you just said to me now that we are on course. Our, as, our, as a country, in, in, in the context of what we are saying we are going to do in our own country, according to our own plan, I can certainly say to you that we are on course because I was, I'm one of the architects that mm -hmm. wrote the plan. Okay, Prof, just before we go, I'd like you to speak to issues around the AFCFTA. Of course, that has... Um, Conversations around that has gone on for quite a while. At what point are we at, and what do you expect? Say, uh, in the remaining, okay, we have four months or five months to go towards the end of the year. What do we expect moving forward before the year runs out, especially with regards to the FCFDA? There are certain things that we need to sort out. Mm. For example, national single window. You need to implement that before you can implement a regional single window to, Im to improve regional trade. Now, we have all variants of things. RRO, we have so many things going on in the country, but we have not delivered national single window. Most African, West African countries have done that. They are waiting for the big boy in Nigeria before they can now implement a regional. And that regional, a single window says to you that it guarantees that if you get goods in, into your country, you clear them within 24 hours. We're nowhere near that because it means that all the agencies that are involved in trade, you have to get all their documentation online, you have to process, you have to send that out to, even before the shipment leaves London to enter into the ship, you would have cleared the goods. They would have approved it, checked everything, then they would get. Now, if I'm the one important, I will now go and pay my duty knowing that yeah, all is all clear before he leaves, so that as he's coming in, he has no business waiting for further inspection. Do you understand what I'm saying? We are not there yet. And you're going to trade. Then I've mentioned about the, the, the infrastructure. I talked about the shipping. We haven't got the shipping line. We haven't got, we haven't cleared our system. Why are we having diversion, trade diversions? Why are people finding it easier and cheaper to go and take their goods in Lome, which is a deep sea port in Kutun, in, in, in Tema, Togo? and then now pay to bring them into... If you move one container from, Lago, from Tema to Nigeria on road, it costs you twice more. It costs you $2,500 to ship it from Europe to, to any of those stores. But it costs you $5,000 to move it by road into, the, into Nigeria. So, so it tells you that people are prepared to take that bill than to go through a papa and see ports. Because they, they do... It used to cost you 250,000 naira a day to have this, to hire out this container, 40 foot container. Now it says it's about 2 million dollars naira. So people, it's not even the money, it's how long you are going to be held there mm -hmm. trying to. So people are just voting with their feet and going out there to get their goods and then come through the border and face all the things that they're facing. It just tells you that the bottleneck is still our customs. It's still the bottleneck. And then we have other seaports in Port Harcourt, we have in Calabar. They don't want to use all those. Every, the merchant port is Lagos. Why should that be? Why should that be? Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what we are facing. Hmm.
thank you, Prof. I'd like to say thank you again for coming on the program and, of course, for this very insightful conversation. Thank you, Prof. for joining the program. Thank you. My pleasure. And I have been speaking with Professor Kenny Fay, who is a development economist, and he has spoken to diverse issues around uh, Nigeria's debt to uh, the ECOWAS uh, single currency, as well as the EFC, EFC FTA, as well as other economic uh, trending issues. But this is the point where we wrap up to this edition of the program, Cosmopolitan Market, which is coming to you on the Nigeria Customs Broadcasting Network. So we will be back again with you tomorrow by 11 a.m. on on NCBN. So do also join us again, same time, same station tomorrow. I am Chiamaka Inendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.